Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be discussing circular linked lists through animations and explanations, so stay tuned. So what is a circular linked list? A singly circular linked list is similar to a singly linked list with one exception, and that exception is that the last node has a reference to the first node in the list. And here's a visual representation of what that looks like. Here we have three nodes. Our first node has a reference to the second node, our second node has a reference to the third node, and our third node, which is our last node, has a reference back to the first node. Now let's get to the structure of a circular linked list. Here I have two classes, a node class and a circular linked list class. My node class is the exact same node class that would be used for a singly linked list. However, in my circular linked list class, there's a bit of a change. Let's look at the node class. So in our node class, we have our data, and we have a reference next. Then I have my constructor, which would take in an arguments data and initialize my instance variables data with that arguments data. I also have my next reference, which I will initialize to null regardless if it was initialized before or not. Then I have my circular link list class. I have a last reference that will be used to keep track of the last node in my list. Now, not only am I initializing my instance variable last with my argument last, but I'm also making sure to set my last next to the next node in the list, so that way it becomes a circular link list. In this case, since my last node is the only node in my list, I'll set my last.next to itself. Now, this can also be done, done outside of the constructor, but I chose to do it in the constructor instead. Now let's get to adding a node to the end of a list. Since our list is empty, to add a node to the end of the list, we're going to set our last equal to new node and pass in that data we want to add. So I pass in 3. Then, if we want to add another node to our existing list, we can do this. First, we create the node we want to add, with data 5 in this case. Then, we set our ends.next to last.next. So ends next will now reference last. Then, we set our last.next to n, and all we do is move our last to n, like this. And that's how we add a node to the end of this list. Now, suppose I want to add a node to the end of a list, but we don't know if that list is null or it has some existing nodes. So let's take this into consideration. So suppose our list was null. If our list is null, then first we do is create the node we want to add, like this. Then we'd want to make sure to make that check. So we check if our last is equal to null. Well, we know our last is equal to null, so all we have to do is set our ends.next to n, because we want the last node to reference itself. Then all we have to do now is set our last to n. And that's it. Now let's add a node to the end of a list and suppose we had some nodes in our existing list. Then the first thing we want to do is the thing, same thing we did before. We just set our ends.next to last.next, like this. Then we'd want to set our last.next to n. And now, since you want our last to reference the last node in the list, all we have to do is set our last to reference the same object our n references. And then we're done. That's how we add a node to the end of an existing list. So let's move on to adding a node to the start of list. I challenge you to do this. I want you to add the node n with data 12 to the start of this list. So you'd have 12, then 14, then 16, and our 16th next would now reference the n. So press pause and give this a try, and when you're done, press play to get back to the solution. So here's the solution. I called my method addToStart. It'll take in some arguments data, create a node, and insert that node in the front of the list. And for a circular linked list, the front of the list is going to be last.next position. So let's do this. The first thing I want to do is create that node that I want to add. Then, I make a check to see if my last is equal to null. In the case that my last is equal to null, then all I have to do is similar to the things we did before. Set our ends.next to n, and then have our last reference the same object our n references. But, in this case, our last is not equal to null. So, all we have to do is set our ends.next to last.next, because remember, last.next is the first position in the list. Like this. Then, I set my last.next to n, and I'm done. That's how I add a node to the start of a list. Now, I challenge you to add a node after a given node in the list. So in this case, I have a list with data 14 and 18. 
I wanted to add the node with data 16 after the node with data 14. So again, give this a try and press play when you're ready to see the solution. So here's a solution. I have a method called add after. It'll take in two arguments, the data that we want to insert after and the data that we want to insert. I make a check to see if my last is equal to null or not. Well, in the case that my last is equal to null, then there's nothing for me to do because there's no node for me to add after. So I simply exit out of this method. But in the case that my last is not equal to null, then I know that there's something to traverse. So let's go through it. The first thing I do is I check if my last is not equal to null. Well, in this case, my last is not equal to null. So I'll have a reference called cur reference the last node in the list. This cur will be used to traverse the list. And here I have a do while loop. The reason I like to use a do while loop here is because in the case I have one node. In that case, my node's next is gonna reference itself. And this gives me the power to first inspect my node and then increment my current to its next. If my current is still equal to itself, then I know I've traversed the entire list. So let's go through it. The first thing I do is check if my cur's data is equal to the data that I want to insert after. However, in this case, my cur's data is 18. The data I want to insert after is 14. So it's not the data that I want to insert after. So I set my cur equal to its next. And then I make that check in my do while loop. I check if my cur is not equal to last. Well, my cur is not equal to my last. So I enter back my loop and I check if my cur's data is equal to the data that I want to insert after. Well, in this case, yes. The data that I want to insert after is 14. So it is the data that I want to insert after. So I simply create that new node with the data 16. Now I'm going to spread things up a bit to make it easier to visualize. And here's that change. So the first thing I do is set my ends.next to curs.next. So it now references the same object that my last references. Then I set curs.next to n, just like this. Now I've completed what I had to do. I inserted my data 16 between 14 and 18. So all I do now is just break out of this loop. And that's how I add a node after a given node in a list. Now let's move on to leading a node at the end of a list. So the first thing I do is create a to delete reference variable that would initially reference the last node in the list. So the next thing I do is I make a check. I check if my last is equal to null or my last dot next is equal to last. So in the case that my last is equal to null, then there's no nodes in the list. So it means there's nothing to delete. However, in the case that my last dot next is equal to last, then that means I only have one node in my list. And all I have to do is set last to null and return to delete. However, in this case, my last is not equal to null and my last.next is not equal to last. So I'll move on to the next step. I'll create a pre-reference variable that would initially be set to the first node in the list. So in that case, it's gonna be referenced to last.next. Then I have a while loop here. Now the reason I'm using a while loop is I know that I'll have a minimum of two nodes in my list because I made that check for null and one node. So if I have two nodes in my list, then I know by previous.next can either be equal to last or not equal to last. And it makes it really easy to traverse a list in this way. So while my previous.next is not equal to last, which it is not, I will simply set my prev equal to its next. Then I'll make that check again. Is my previous.next not equal to last? Well, my previous.next is equal to last, so I exit my loop and set my previous.next to last.next, and I set my last to prev. So now my last references the previous node in my list, which will be the new last node after deleting the last node. And all I do is simply return to delete. And that's how I delete a node at the end of a list. Now, I challenge you to delete a node at the start of the list. So in this case, the node to delete will be the node with data 14. So again, pause the video and press play when you're ready to see the solution. So here's the solution. Now this is pretty easy if you think about it. If we had more than one node in the list, we know that we have a lot of reference to the last node in the list. And we know that our front node is gonna be last.next. So all we have to do is set last.next to front.next, and that's it. So let's go through this. The first thing we do is create a to delete reference variable that is that first reference the last node in the list. Then we make a check to see if our last is equal to null or our last.next is equal to last. So in this case, we know that our last is not equal to null and our last.next is not equal to last. So we don't have to set our last to null and return to delete. Then we set to delete equal to last.next. Now we know we've reached the front of the list. 
So we simply say, like I said before, set our last.next to to deletes.next, and then we just return to delete. And that's it. Pretty simple. Now, let's delete a node after a given node in a list. Now, in this case, suppose I want to delete the node after the node with data 14. So it would be the node with data 16. And also, when you're doing this, keep in mind if I only have one node in the list. Because in that case, that node's next is going to be itself. And I'd want to delete that node. So write a method to do this. And press play when ready to see the solution. So here's the solution. This method may look a bit long, but once you understand the logic behind it, the code usually flows very easily. So let's go through it. The first thing I want to do is check if my last is equal to null. If my last is equal to null, then we know there are no nodes in the list. So all I have to do is return null. Then I create two reference variables. The first reference variable is called a toDelete. It'll be used to keep track of the node that I want to delete. The next one is called cur, and it'll be used to iterate over the list. So now, I go inside my do while loop, and I check if my curse data is equal to the data that I want to delete after. Well, the data that I want to delete after is data 14, so it is not the data. So I simply set my cur equal to cur.next. Then, I make the check if my cur is not equal to my last. Well, my cur is not equal to my last, so I go back inside my loop, and I check if my curse.data is equal to the data that I want to delete after, and it is. So, I set my to delete to curs.next. Then, I check if curs.next is equal to cur. This is the case where we have one node in our list. If we only have one node in our list, then the node to delete after is the same node, and all we have to do is set our last equal to null. However, this is not the case, so we move on to our else. Then, we set our curs.next to to deletes.next, just like how we normally delete a node in a linked list. However, this time I make a check to see if my to delete is the last node in the list. Because we know if we want to delete the last node in the list, then we have to set the last node to the previous node in the list. However, this node is not the last node in the list, so we simply break out of this loop and return to delete. And that's how we delete a node after a given node in a list. Now let's move on to the time complexity for insertion. To insert a node at the front of a list is very easy. Because we have a reference to the last node in the list, our front of the list is just going to be last.next. So you can see how that can be an O of 1 or constant time operation. To insert a node at the end of the list is also an O of 1 or constant time operation. Because again, we have a node to the last node, a reference to the last node in the list. So all we do is just insert that node at the end. So that's going to be constant time. However, if we want to insert a node after a given node, like all the other linked lists, we're going to have to look for that node to insert after. And we have to tra traverse the entire circular link list to find that node. And that can be an O of n or linear time operation. For the space complexity, like we've seen for a singly linked list and a doubly linked list, inserting at the front of the list is going to use a constant amount of space. So again, we're going to have a constant space complexity. Similar to insert at front, insert at end, we're also going to use a constant amount of space. So that's also going to be a constant space complexity. Similar to insert at end and insert at front, insert at after a given node, then we're also using a constant amount of space, so it's going to be constant space complexity. For the time complexity for deletion, deleting a node at the front of the list is very easy because we have a node, a reference to the last node in the list. We can simply set that last node's next to front stop next, and that's it. It's a constant time operation. However, to leave the node at the end of the list, we have to traverse the entire list to get to the previous node and then set that previous next to last next and then we'd have to set last that previous node. So you can see this is going to be a linear time operation, we're traversing the entire list. Now, similar to delete at end, deleting after a given node means that we'd have to look through the entire list to find the node that we want to delete after. In the worst case, we don't even find the node that we want to delete after, so it's going to be a linear time operation. Now, again, the space complexity for deletion, deleting at the front of the list, again, we're using a constant amount of space, so we're going to have a constant space complexity. Delete at end and delete at after also use a constant amount of space, so again, it's going to be a constant space complexity. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.